Detox, and I am here with my partner in crime, MZ. How are you? What's going on, guys? Mm. Doing good. You doing good? You surviving? Surviving. Thriving? Good as can be. If I was any better, it'd be illegal. Oh, and we're from the military, so that... <laughs> <laughs> a lot of connotation. So, hey, I so I was looking around one day and I am like on TikTok and I will be the first to tell you I don't have TikTok. Well, okay, I lie. I do now because I was told by my virtual assistants I have to have it. So now I have it. But up to the old TikTok. I'm old. That's just what happens. Like I'm not in on all this stuff. So anywho. Um, I'm scrolling around and I see this person that is kind of hilarious and she's talking about, it's all nursing education stuff, but she's doing it with humor and it's, and I'm like watching her. I'm like, God, she's funny. And so, you know, we already had, we already did a whole thing with humor and, and decompressing people. Right. And we brought nurse Blake on and we had that chat. And so she has a twist to it. Well, it's not really a twist. It's similar to Blake, but she's very zeroed in and focused in on the education point. So I saw this, I'm like, well, I want to meet her. And so I just emailed her and I thought I'll hear from her in like, you know, a year because she has like half a million followers and she's been on everything. And lo and behold, universe was on my side and she's like, Hey, <laughs> and I was like, Hey, we have this little podcast. You want to come on? She said, heck yeah. So I was super excited that I get to bring on Meg Harrell from nursemegrn.com. And we'll have all that info in the summary. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit about her and then we'll actually let her talk because she's over here smiling at us and laughing as I goof off. <laughs> so Meg's a registered nurse of 15 years. And in my world, that's still a baby. She's a creator of nursemegrn.com. And she's focused on educational business for nursing school students and collects tests for test prep lordy and struggling new nurses which we all were at one time she'd been featured on nbc fox news tbs and morning shows but mostly seen on tiktok where she shares her expert tips while posting relatable content for anyone in the healthcare space did i get that all right meg yeah that was perfect that's me that's you i know she's a <laughs> yeah, girl nice. nurse meg how are Hello? you I'm so good. I'm so happy to be here. She like she smiles all the time too. Like you, no matter where you see her, she's always smiling. It's like my defense mechanism. Yes, she. That's it. You know what? I'm gonna tell you that's a good one because in my world, I remember distinctly. I would come in the morning, and I was gonna say I was the nurse manager of an obstetrical unit. We had seven pregnant women at the same time. My staff. So it's like a war zone, it was danger zone, right? So you walked in and you didn't know if you should come with cookies or tissues or like you had to get rid of weapons. You didn't know what you were walking into, right? <laughs> and and it's obstetric did labor and delivery. So they didn't have a lot of sympathy for that. Yeah. Right. I think it happened. So I would come in and I remember distinctly coming in the morning and we're all just kind of waking up and grabbing our our scrubs and I would say to this one particular nurse every morning we'd be on together I'm like oh good morning because I just firmly believe whether you like someone or not you should just say good morning you know and start the day off right don't be cool she would yeah. grunt and walk off grunt and I mean like day after this went on for like a couple of months finally I was like I was like hey listen I know it's not always awesome to be here but you're alive and that's a good thing and we all want to start off on a good note. So can't we all just say good morning? <laughs> she was looked... this like an old salty charge nurse? Or... No, she was younger. She, uh, well, fewer years than me. That doesn't say much, but she, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I appreciate the smile is what that long story connotates to. Yeah. Yeah. I do think that nurses are like the best actors. Like oh, we, we can really put on a face. I don't know why directors don't just go to the hospitals to cast because we have like the best like hide reaction type faces we we should be actresses and actors I have to a lot because I said you know we're not trying to take your sunshine at all because we're so happy to have you here but we had Blake on and we had nurse Blake and he was hilarious and I said I'm like are you still nursing and he's like 
Oh, they won't let me in the doors. Nope. No <laughs> HR will bad, touch bad me. Bad boy. Yeah, because he's like, I mean, come on, I make fun of a lot of things that they don't really want to deal with. And I'm like, yeah, fair enough. But you, on the other hand, you still are PRN, sort of. Yes. So this, I am not going to, I've definitely put the gavel down. I'm going to focus 100% on my business and oh, not God. go back to the hospital. That's what I say now. Who knows? what the future holds. It's really hard for a nurse to stop being a nurse. Um, it is. But I really want to do what I'm doing now. I just love it so much. There's so much fulfillment. I find so much purpose in it. And I kind of feel like this is what I am supposed to be doing, especially post pandemic. Mm, so let's talk about this. So you, you've been a nurse for 15 years. As I joked, you're a baby a nurse for 30 yeah. years. <laughs> yeah. I can start from the very beginning. Yeah. From so when I was a little girl, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Not, we don't uh, have that much time. I that early. I mean, my dad was a nurse and that's kind of what introduced me to the whole healthcare space. Mm. He was a nurse in a hospital. He did home health. He kind of like has done everything. And I was always exposed to that world and kind of was so interested in it. And he would explain everything to me. I felt very comfortable around like blood and needles and like nothing grossed me out. So I just figured, all right, he's doing it. That's what I want to do also. So right out of high school, I was like, all right, prereqs, this is what I'm going to do. And it was a real struggle to get into nursing school, to pass nursing school. I had to do LPN first because I kept applying to my community college and it was like the cheapest college around. So it's very competitive. Everyone wants to go to the cheaper one. I could not get into that RN program for like years. Wow. All right, I'll do the LPN program did that and then worked for a little while and saved up some money and then did the RN program and then worked for a little bit, saved up some money and then did the BSN online. And it was kind of like a, quite a journey to. How long did that, how many years was that? Oh man, I did get married and make a few children like in between there. (laughs) Made a few children. children. Yeah, it was quite a few years, probably like six, six years or so to kind of get to the, to the bachelor's worlds. And it was, I definitely saw a lot of highlighted parts of school that were really discouraging that I still remember the fact that like the professors, they just don't seem to have a lot of control over the curriculum or what's going to be on the exams or how to teach or compassion towards anybody in the school who's, let's say they're giving birth or they have a death in the family. Or, like there's no flexibility or empathy. There's it's like, rigid. are we trying to teach that this early to then treat everybody else this way? And then also in clinicals, the way that clinicals are, were set up and are set up is students just go on the floor and see if that nurse wants to give you the time of day. Oh, um, Wow. Well, I will tell you, I remember our director of nursing in college, no joke. So we were, so we started clinicals our sophomore year, the second half of our sophomore year. That's why I went to the college because it, it, um, it had so much clinical shout out to St. Joe's in Wyndham, Maine. And so I, I went there and I think after our first semester, the director started to take us into her office one by one, the whole class. And we started with 42. It wasn't a big college. We started with 42 nurses. Graduated 19. Yeah, wow. that's how I met. That's the attrition rate. It was high. But she was part of the reason for that because she brought him in and she would say to people, yeah, I don't think you have what it takes. Like, if you're just here to get a husband, go get a different degree. I mean, well, she thanks just... for instilling the uh, encouragement and faith there. And so <laughs> Goodness. I, I didn't get that talk. I, I was like one of those that was like, you're good. You know, have a good day. But uh, I remember they would come out and it was one of two things. They would be like, F you. And they'd go get a different degree or they'd be like, F you and I'm going to show you. And they would they go in and they would do it. But out of 42, we graduated 19. It was a very tough yeah, that's course. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So then, so you, what did you start out in? What were your background? Because you told me you did a lot of stuff, like a lot of different. Yeah, I've kind of been everywhere. I When I got my LPN, 
I was able to work at a bunch of different types of rehabs and lockdown Alzheimer's dementia units and long-term care facilities, assisted livings. I kind of popped around all over Central Florida, Daytona, that kind of area, just kind of gaining experience. And as a new nurse being thrown into those environments, great, great learning experiences because you sink or swim. You've got like 40 mm-hmm. patients. You're doing all the med pass, all the dressing changes, all the respiratory care, all the wound care. I mean, everything. Like you are everything. So if you learn time management there, you'll survive anywhere. But then eventually I did get into the hospital setting and I had the most perfect job lined up for me. It was um, a post-op in like a PACI setting. It was two minutes from my house. It was the pay that I wanted. It was like so perfect. Right when I was graduating with my RN, I didn't interview anywhere. Nice. I didn't apply anywhere. I had this perfect job. Wow. And then as soon as I graduated, they told me, oh no, we had to give that position away. No. It's not yours anymore. I had no backup plan. Oh. And I was like, no. it took me like three more months to find another job. And I found a job on a PCU unit. So cardiac, which was what I hated. I was so mad. I got, that was the only place that would take me. And it was 45 minutes from my house. I was so mad. I was so disappointed but it turned out to be the best floor I've ever worked on to this day and the best people that I ever worked with, the best atmosphere. And it was a real lesson on what we think is a delay in life. And we think is, Oh, it's not going my way. Like everything's falling apart. Sometimes there's something better for you being built and it looks like a delay to you, but everything's being set up. So I was really, really grateful for that. And then every time I veered away from cardiac, like, oh, I'll try med surge and I'll try med surge telly and I'll try neuro. And I always go back to cardiac, always. Sometimes there's a blessing in the no. It's true. You didn't want to be a PACU nurse. You really. Like, it was so close to my house and it was, it just seemed so perfect. Well, that part did, but you're not, and I'm not knocking, I am not knocking any nurses at all because I think all of them are phenomenal. But, in the subculture of that, it your learning would have been limited. You know what I mean? Compared to I mean, CVICU, I mean, come on. For sure. I mean, I do think that a lot of people coming out of school think that they need to reach the highest echelon of nursing and have every single skill and never lose it. But I do feel like after 15 years, if you graduate and you have <laughs> Go ahead. See, they agree with me. Uh, but if you end up in like a school setting and you just want to be a school nurse and you're a school nurse for 30 years and you're like, oh no, I lost all my IV skills. If that's where you're happy, fantastic. Right. Oh, I agree. I that, like people think they oh, I have to end up in ICU and I have to end up like going to nurse practitioner school. Find where your happiness is. Stay there when you don't like it. Leave because you have the most versatile degree ever and RN can work literally anywhere. And you don't, you really don't want to be in an area that you're not comfortable in. I remember when I worked, so I was, I was, I wasn't a newer nurse, but I've been a nurse like five, six years. Right. And I worked on this labor and delivery floor and we were separate labor and delivery. And then you had a postpartum unit and we had a NICU and I had zero desire to be a postpartum nurse. Like no way. My little ADHD squirrely brain could not hack that to save my life, right? You could put me in the NICU. You could put me in L&D. So at some point, they all decided, oh, you know what? We're going to cross train all the nurses. And I was like, <gasps> and I run to my boss. I'm like, listen, I will take every single one of your postpartum nurses and orient them. Plus all the nursing students that come on, plus any new people, like you just give me everybody. (laughs) I am begging you, please don't put me on postpartum. It is not where I want to be. I like, I just, it to my bone. Right. And uh, she was like, okay. And I did, I oriented everybody, but there was a difference. Those postpartum nurses that came over, the ones that truly loved postpartum, I traumatized them in labor and delivery when we're running around the corner doing a crash C-section and they're like, "Ah." so I agree. Like go where you are comfortable. If it is postpartum, Hey, 
all my postpartum nurses, you rock it out. Like I, I will never put any specialty below or above anybody else, but yeah. Yeah, know yourself. Like, cause <laughs> I would have died on post. Huh? You know, like you think you might want something when you're in nursing school, like, oh my God, I want to do pick you or, oh my God, I want to work peds, but kind of give yourself an opportunity to try different things. Cause you never know what you're going to like. And sometimes it's less about the specialty and more about the culture of the floor. And that, like who you're yes. with. Yeah. So just try different things. Don't I th- get you stuck. guys get this like now, like these nurses, it blows my mind because you, the nurse is coming out and this has been going on for 10 plus years. I'm a very old nurse, but they, they are able to go into areas that no way would we ever let them go into like walking into labor and delivery uh no walking into an icu no everybody was starting like med surge or something like that they all had to be like legal uh drug pushers right that's what that's what med surge is like y'all learn your drugs there and so when people are just like what do you think i should do or i can't find anything here and i was like listen if you have an opportunity, and I'm not saying to stay there, but I really think med surge is the best place to start to get a whole baseline. If you don't know, if you really don't know, go into med surge. You're going to learn all those foundational drugs. You're going to learn all the different conditions or a step down unit or something like that, where you get a big garden variety. When they jump in and specialize, I'm not saying it's wrong. I mean, they're doing it, but you don't have that same like foundation. Yeah, foundation. I do see a lot of new nurses starting in ICU, ah. in ER, and even a new nurse starting in ER, it's fantastic. You're going to learn everything. Yeah. And it's kind of, you know, a little bit dependent on who's teaching you and and who's really giving you a good foundation. Mm. And that's kind of why I created an online kind of course and portal called the new nurse survival guide, because I feel like no matter where you start, you either get a good foundation or a bad foundation. And to have to struggle in that first year of trying to figure out how do I do this time management? How do I communicate? Because no one, there's no baseline program for new nurses when they get hired. It's follow this nurse around for six weeks and you'll figure it out, which is kind of scary. There's no graduate nurse programs. I mean, of all the hospitals that I've worked at, each one has a different kind of thing. Yeah. A lot of it is silly modules that you do online and silly little classes and you just follow a nurse around, but there's no particular, let's make sure that you can do these skills. Let's make sure that you can communicate and give report. Let's make sure you know how to call a doctor or how to run a code. There's no like exact classes. Like all the things you don't put in a textbook. Yes. And that's what preceptors should be teaching, but no one teaches them how to be a preceptor either. So it's kind of this like weird cycle of everybody figuring it out in their first couple of years. And I'm here to stop that. I think everybody should get a great foundation in at least the first three months. MZ. I was checking. Oh, good. Well, I was going to say MZ has a perspective because she's a med tech, right? And so I I know she has a perspective of the new nurses and, and You can talk to that, MZ. (laughs) You're dealing with new nurses from a med tech perspective. Well, I'll definitely get there. But before I lose the thought, I was going to touch on the the new nurse survival guide. Um, I was checking out the website and it it talks about um, part of the guide having a section on how to handle errors and handle mistakes because we know it's going to happen. So I was kind of tickled to see that in there because we, I mean, we've done a whole podcast on medication errors and, um, you know, stuff happens. It's a practice. None of us are perfect. Um, But I was so happy to see that included in there. And it's like having, even if you don't, you know, get to the hospital and have a preceptor that's got their head on straight and, and there to help, you've got this Meg in your phone right there ready to go <laughs> and show you the rope. So that's super cool. Super cool. I wish, I wish I would have had something like that. Um, yeah. That's how I felt. Like, I wish I had that. I looked back and what was the stuff that stressed me out the most? What would I have panic attacks before I clocked in about like, write all that down, look back on everything that I would write in my notes and journal about everything that made me nervous that now 15 years later, I'm like, ah. I got this. Second okay, nature. Now let's give that confidence and that clarity and those skills 
to the brand new nurses so that they're not super stressed so that they don't leave the profession in the first couple of years, which is, you know, about 40% will leave in the first couple of years, which wow. is in, you should not have that happening. And I'm sure the pandemic has made those numbers exponentially higher, but if we can give them confidence and skills and make them feel really good and less anxious about all the things that they should know, oh my gosh, we'll have a crazy, amazing generation that then teaches the next generation. And then it just snowballs into something better. Changing the culture. But let, let's talk about that real quick was what you saw happening. So what sparked all this? You're a nurse, you're hitting 15 years, and then guess what happens? <laughs> or like 13 years at the time. The big panorama. So it kind of started <laughs> right before the pandemic where I was kind of moving up in my positions. You know, when you're there for a little while, they're like, oh, you should do charge nurse. You should do relief this. And mm-hmm. you should you know, they're like, oh my gosh, someone knows how to use the computer. Someone knows what <laughs> kind of what they're doing. Put, put them up, put them up. Um, so as I started to kind of move up and train new nurses, I kind of found like, oh man, I can really explain things in a way that makes sense. Like I really feel confident training new nurses. And then getting to the point of, I feel really confident being charged over this floor and knowing what my staff needs and knowing that I can, I'll change a bedpan if you want me to as a charge nurse, I'll take someone to the bathroom, I'll help you turn somebody and creating that atmosphere was so, so amazing. And then I started to create almost like a little curriculum to share with everybody on my floor. Like, this is how you should give report or here's a script on how to call the doctor because you're freaking out and like shaking, holding the phone, <laughs> like, let me help you. And um, we started to hire nurses for a through PCU floor at our hospital. We had like a med surge telly. It was a very small hospital here in Florida, but we opened up a true PCU slash step down kind of unit. And we hired you know, nurses that I had worked with forever, experienced nurses and brand new nurses. Those brand new nurses were not passing their NCLEX the first time. So we're like, oh my God, we're gonna have to delay the opening of the floor. Like this is, what if we have to get travelers? We're gonna lose the entire budget. This is kind of scary. So I started to try to help some of these students and new nurses to pass the NCLEX. So I started to create this little like study curriculum based on like my old textbooks they would bring in their materials. And that's when I started to create like an NCLEX study program where I would identify, okay, why are these smart people not passing this standardized test? Okay, you don't know strategy. Let's teach you test strategy. Okay, you have a ton of anxiety. Let's teach you how to manage your anxiety so that you're clear in the exam. Let's base these habits and practices on neuroscience. How does how do our how does our brain actually work? Now let's study in that way to like, really max out the brain power. And then of course, let's learn content. And let's, you know, me and other nurses write practice questions that are based on clinical judgment and clinical reaction. And then when the pandemic hit, (laughs) it was an oh shit moment where everyone who was, you know, my age or higher were saying, oh, I don't don't wanna do this, I'm out. So all of the experienced nurses, everyone's retiring early. It's already such a scary time to be clocking in. It was, and I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. It was terrifying to see. Yeah. We we're going to lose an entire generation of nurses. Mm-hmm. And what does this mean for the future? What does it mean for when I'm in the hospital or my family's in the hospital? It's going to be brand new nurses who don't know what they're doing, not their fault. Training other new nurses who don't know what they're doing. That's going to snowball. That's going to turn into we lost a generation, where's the pride in this profession? So that's when I started the TikTok in 2020. That's when I started the website. All of the resources that I had combined over the last decade, I started to put on the website and saying, hey, download this free report sheet, download this flow sheet. Let me teach you time management. This is what to look out for. This is the first 10 things to do in 30 seconds in a code. This is what you delegate. This is what you bring into the room trying to make it so simple so that every new nurse that came in wasn't terrified. They'll be terrified at the other things, but <laughs> at least code. A foundation. getting them to pass the NCLEX was kind of um, the main focus at, at first, because all those nurses that had to do like virtual clinicals and virtual stuff, oh, gosh. getting those people to pass the NCLEX and then getting their foundation 
was my focus for, for 2020 and 2021. How, when you were writing, I'm just curious, when you were writing these curriculums up, like before the pandemic and everything, and you were putting, was the floor receiving them well? Were the nurses in them? They were. That's, that's a bit, well, you say absolutely, but that's so funny because that, that's a really positive sign that this. I mean, it makes their life easier. And if the other experienced nurses, they're given a new nurse to follow them around and they can say, oh, here's this report sheet that that Meg made. Just fill it out and read it top to bottom. This is how you give kind it. Kind of a win-win. Like don't, yeah, it's kind of like taking the load off them also. Like, hey, there's a stack of flow sheets. You want to stay on task while you follow me around and get trained? Use that flow sheet and stay yeah. on task. Fill it out. Let's go. So it kind of made everybody's life a little bit easier because I was just passing stuff out for free. Like, let's just make everyone's life easier. And then eventually they would see, oh, these people are actually learning. We're making good nurses. They're staying on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Meg, would, would you have guessed at that point, though, that what you were doing would catch on in the way it did? And then fast forward three, four years later, I mean, look at you now. Would you have ever have guessed that this would have been the outcome? No, I just thought it was like for me in my little floor, I want my little circle to be awesome. To be awesome, yeah. Well, it, <laughs> I, I, it I'm in awe of that. And I'll tell you, I, I'm definitely not speaking for every nurse. I'm sure everybody's had different experiences. But I remember um, when I left the military, I worked civilian for a couple of years. And they were doing computer charting, which is standard now. But it wasn't everywhere. <laughs> So the military, we were still riding on, we we're a little behind. We were still riding on floor. Uh, As a matter little. of fact, I was one of the, when I left as a nurse manager and, and I, uh, our floor helped get the first computerized charting in there. If that tells you anything, <laughs> dating myself. But anyway. Um, what system was it? Do you remember what, what the system was? Oh. Was it like I don't, you know what? I do not remember because I will tell you every weekend, every month or two months, I was bringing in a new system and putting it in our like triage room to test out. I mean, I was blurry eyed. We You're talking I, about CHS. Oh no, 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 no. Computerized the computerized charting for like obstetrics. Like we had the monitors and then you would chart right there on the, oh, okay. Yeah, no, no. So anyway, so, um, you get out of the military and I work in civilian for a couple of years. And actually it was, it might've been two years, but I walked in there. I had never done the computer charting there. And I told him like, Hey, this is a little new to me. I, I mean, I know how to chart. I just got a, the timing and all that stuff. Right. So get in rhythm. I might've been there a month or so in the morning I was working nights I would come in and the day shift, they wouldn't say anything to me. They would leave notes on the the doors in the break room for me to get, or the nurse's station for me to grab. And it would basically tell me all the things that I missed and did wrong. Nobody came and talked to me. Mm -mm. And then Not they give face to face oh. feedback. Yeah. And then Jeez. I was a certified OB nurse. So I passed a test. That's what that means, right? There's nothing wild about that. So I took another test and I passed it. And they say you're certified. I didn't get any extra money for it. So I come in and there was one other certified OB nurse and they needed all our information. And so I, you know, I hand it to my the Gaithan of it. And I kid you not, this woman went head to head to me day, every day we were changing shifts, I'd be opposite her. And she was just so ornery with me. So when I hear that, oh yeah, I had really not great experiences. I loved teaching. I was like, I'm, I'll give you all my information. I mean, I think it's gonna make life easier for all of us. But I love hearing that, what you're saying, because I am hoping that that culture changes and it doesn't have a choice right now i just read a stat i don't know how accurate it is but it was a little while ago i read it by 2030 it will be approximately a half million nurses short a half million nurses short by 2030 six years from that's now. startling like, a, uh, like 
Yeah. Oh. Which is kind of why you caught my attention, you know, because I'm like, oh, look at somebody's trying to do something proactive, slashy reactive. But I mean, you are trying to be proactive in this to say, hey, oh. let's let's build a better quality. Let's not burn out our poor new nurses, you know, within the first year. Let's we have to think about the change future. the narrative. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that that's such a it's so critical. It is critical because they do. They burn out. You know, sometimes I wonder how I lasted as many years as I did because there was yeah. a lot of and, uh, I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into burnout, you know, yes. there's a lot oh, yes. like, you know, management, there's a lot of standards, um, staffing and ratios. And there's a lot of things that go into burnout and also just the stuff you see, you know, the best and worst of humanity. Yeah. Um, but, we can take some of those elements and fix them. Like, why not? Right. You know, let's think about how we can make this a little bit better and instead of just being like, oh yeah, nursing's stressful. You know, you're just going to be burnt out by year three. You don't Sucks have to, to suck. Yeah. They made it a compl- like it's complacent. Like they're just like, yeah, this is just what happens. And it's like, does it really have to happen does like it- that? Not anymore. Yeah. I really don't think so. No. And I think- the more, the longer that I'm on TikTok and the more nurses and nurse influencers and people that I meet in the space, I'm like, oh, there's a lot of positive change coming. This next generation, there's a little like bent towards advocacy that maybe I didn't see in my elder millennial generation, <laughs> but, and maybe it's how they grew up, but I'm like, oh, there's a little bit of like a social oh. just bent. And I'm like, this is going to be really good for nursing and healthcare. I see good things. Yeah, it has to. There's, I mean, I, you know, I tell people all the time, they're like, oh yeah, this, I'm sick, I'm hurt and whatever. I'm like, let me just tell you, go take your vitamins, go exercise, go drink a good smoothie, green smoothie, because you do not want to be in the hospitals right now. And I said, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, but the reality of it is COVID wiped out really entire generation too early, you know, where they would have probably stayed another five years, let the transitions happen. They're like, peace out later. You know, we're done. That that's a lot. And and people are like, well, they're all learning. And I'm like, you you really don't understand the emblem. Like you really, really don't like in simple stuff. I put my dad ended up in the hospital. He ended up with influenza. Uh, No problem. Sorry, Dad, I'm going to reveal a little here. But he um, he's on Flomax. You know, he needed help to pee. So we put him in the hospital before he ever took his meds. It was early in the morning, right? I had I didn't even know he was on it. And then he, he tells, you know, us, like, hey, he's like, oh, I haven't peed today. Ooh, okay. Well, he's also, I think he had a little bit of um, cold-induced asthma. So he was hacking a lot, and the nebulizer He was due for another NEB treatment. Nurse comes in, doesn't introduce herself, um, and grabs ultrasound, puts it on his bladder, and says, well, your bladder's, like, really full. we got to empty it. I need to put a Foley in you. And my dad's over there hacking. And so she's getting ready to go get the stuff. I was like, hey, could could we do a NEB treatment first? Because, you know, he's coughing. And she's like, well, his bladder is very full. And I said, yeah, you go put a Foley catheter in with somebody that one already has a prostate thing going on and two is coughing. I said, you're going to wear the Foley and have a very mad patient. <laughs> yeah. She just like looked at me and she kind of so huffed that was it. An example of like a prioritization. Yes. And that's that you don't learn unless it comes with experience. Right. But that's kind of my goal is to teach that early. Like, let's make sure you understand that kind of thing in the first six months. What really is the priority in that situation? Like, yeah, sure. We got to get the the bladder empty. Yes. Is it going to explode in the next 20 minutes? No. Probably not. No. But we could do something to help the guy breathe, airway breathing circulation first, right? Mm-hmm. And make the patient comfortable so that we can kind of do an uncomfortable thing. Because it and- still sucks. <laughs> oh, nobody wants to do it. No one wants right. to have it done. Right. But that's such a great example of the kind of stuff that I teach that you won't learn in school, that you have to learn early and it's going to make your life easier. It's going to make your patient's life easier and you're going to feel good at your job. 
Do you as a brand. do you go around to different hospitals and teach? Like, how does how do you um, execute all this? Yeah, so I do go to nursing schools and kind of do like if they're having a national student day mm -hmm. or they're having some sort of like special fair or something, I'll go and talk to the nursing students, kind of give an introduction of like, you chose the right profession. Please don't give up. I know nursing school is a bitch. And I know that these professors, they act like they don't give a shit about you, but I am here to help you pass your next exam, learn as much as you can. And I'm going to help you in the next steps. I'm going to help you get your licensure. I'm going to help you train you, whatever training that you get from your preceptor, from their hospital, I'm going to supplement it with real life. I'm your bestie teaching you not a, like a professor or a textbook. I'm going to teach you like, I'm just your best friend and I'm really helping you. So a lot of my resources are videos and study guides and printouts that you'll use. So some of it, for example, the report sheet is something that you would fill out with your patient information and read top to bottom when you're getting report. My flow sheet is designed for you to fill out for each patient and it's time sensitive. So it has seven to seven on one side and it has a place where you, you will fill out the labs for the day. What's important for this person, any new orders, updates, the vitals, the blood sugars on the exact times that you need to do it so that you don't fall behind. Um, so it's a lot of printouts that you physically use until you kind of get it down. And then some of it is you watch a video, you take that printout from that video and you take it to work and you use that in your practice and you get better and better. And then it becomes sort of like a, a habit, a new neural network in your brain that you're like, oh, now I know how to think like a nurse. Muscle memory and practical application. When you move it from your conscious to your subconscious, which is what you're doing, you know, I, I call that you're gaining your finesse, right? Like if somebody said, like, Donna, would you go back to the, you know, would you go back to uh, nursing in a hospital? I'm like, mm, no. And they're like, really? Why? I'm like, well, a couple of reasons. I've been doing it too long and I will not work well with civilian doctors. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a problem okay, that i totally understand yeah yes i that's a whole other podcast but anyway then there's some great ones out there don't get me wrong i just phenomenal doctors however there's others and two <laughs> i think my finesse is gone and that that takes time you know and so i i say this to all the new nurses out there what what meg is going to teach you is how to move these conscious tasks because everything's a checklist at first right we all go home driving like did i do this did i do that did i do this did i do that and then we eventually they get tucked back into our subconscious and they become part of our innate being and then we're building that finesse i mean i remember just I, I used to try to explain like what you're doing. I used to try to explain this and it never came out right. It, it almost like, I'm like, I know this is going to sound arrogant, but I said, there's just a point where you're like, you're in the environment, you know, the docs that are working that day, you know, the nurses are working day, you know, their skills, you know, all that. Like I knew specifically when rounds were happening, when the doc was walking off, I'd stick my ear around the corner because he was going to like whip off an order somewhere that I, or I'd be like, Hey, do you want this order? Cause he would forget. Oh yeah. He'd say over his shoulder. Right. It just was that person. You, you start tucking in all these nuances coupled with everything you're teaching, like that checklist, right? You're teaching the more you do the checklist, the more it's ingrained and the more you're not thinking and looking back, you know, like, Oh, it's been four hours. Did we check the Foley? I look at my, hey, go to the tech or the LPN or like, hey, did, did you check that? We, you know, whatever it is, you know, like the alarms start going off. So I think what you're doing is phenomenal. Like, I love how you described it. When I kind of tell new nurses and they're like, oh, I'm just not getting it. I'm like, you've been here for two weeks. Yeah. So being a nurse and that 12 hour shift is like, you're in a canoe and you're juggling a million things. You're juggling a million things. And hitting the rapids. Down the river. <laughs> <laughs> but once you kind of get it and you know what rapids to anticipate, it's going to be kind of be the same kind of things. Once you see the same kind of patients, uh -huh. the same kind of doctors, you know, the flow of the river, you're like, oh, I know this. And then as soon as you clock in, you know exactly what to pick up and juggle. 
you know, exactly the flow of the river and you just go down that flow and it's second nature, but it is something you have to kind of get and learn. And that flow sheet, like you were talking about time-wise, the flow sheet is so great for those new nurses because they'll be like, I got to check that fully in four hours. I'm going to write it down in that whatever time it is, two hours, Mm -hmm. two o'clock. I got to check the fully, write it in at that two hour mark. So that when two o'clock comes, you're looking at your flow sheet. Let me make sure that I do that. How, so you're saying a nurse isn't going to be perfect on day one? (laughs) You need to like accept that and it's okay. You know, a lot of people everybody come needs to accept it, including the experienced people. Everybody that ding, comes ding, ding. on the first day is like, oh my God, I feel like I know nothing. And I'm like, yeah, you don't. Nursing right. school is just a bunch of dots. Yep. They throw a bunch of dots at you, you somehow pass. And then as you're working in a real life setting, all those dots start to connect. That's where the real learning happens. So if you get into your first shift and you're like, oh my God, I know nothing. What's wrong with me? Everybody feels that way. And that's normal. Yeah. I, if I walked back in right now, I would say 50% of my skills are there. You t- ask me to start an IV. I have such muscle memory from it. I could pop one in even after not touching one for years. It, it's muscle memory. I can literally think my way through that. But it's the finesse of and things that maybe I haven't seen or like one time I'll tell you scary as hell. I, I've worked at this time. I had just been working labor and delivery. Again, it was this short time I worked civilian and come on the floor, weirdly dead on our unit. There's, there's no uh, laboring patients. We have a minimal amount of mommies and babies. And I'm like, Oh God, that's nice. And then the night shift supervisor comes up and says like, we need somebody to go to med surge and those darling nurses, you're the new person you go. Yeah, this is what I dealt with all the time. They were super obnoxious people. Anyway, so I'm like, fuck all of you. And I went. <laughs> and so okay. off I went and I walked in the door and I first thing I said, because I was like, I'm not, this is a bad situation. I'm not comfortable in that surge. That is a lot of patients and a lot of drugs that I'm not familiar with anymore. And I walked in the door and I looked at them. And we sit down and report, and the first words out of my mouth was not even hello. It was, I'm just letting you know, I'm not taking a team. <laughs> they were like, oh, and this one nurse there, I love her to death. She said, I'll take you. And she knew, right? And she's like, yeah, because she was a seasoned nurse. Like, we knew this was not a good setup, right? So yeah. I became her nurse. And I remember, I'm like, all right, this is how I'm going to do it. If they've been on antibiotics for a couple of days, I don't need to worry about that because they're not having reactions. They're going to be good. So I could rule out that stuff. So I'm going down through this checklist of things that I know that I can give safely mm-hmm. without having to double check everything, right? But I still need to know drugs that I'm not familiar with. So I'm looking stuff up. And this LPN comes in and she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm just looking up some of these drugs to make sure I'm on par. As long as I know the genre and the... You know, it will come back quickly, you know. And she laughed and she's like, oh, oh, you're one of those good nurses, huh? And she chuckled and walked off. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, if it's ordered, I just give it. I don't have time to look this stuff up. And Oy. that was one. Second thing that happens, 9 o'clock comes. They do all blood sugars at the exact same time. The whole floor, like like 40 beds. They do all the blood sugars at the same time. So now the lab comes up and hands us. Like I got six or seven blood sugars that are all at the exact same time. And you can't give them all at the exact same time. Very, like, who the hell didn't think of staggering any of this stuff, right? And Not so an octopus. Damn. I was stressed. I go, well, exactly what do we do here? And the LPN's just like, this is what she said. And I kid you not. She goes, I'm going to be honest with you. She's like... You're going to give it to the ones that um, have the highest blood sugar. And I looked at her. Yeah, first. And she goes, by the time you get done. Oh, no, it gets worse. By the time you get done, you're probably like really late on the other ones, like hours. And then it's going to cross over into their next dose. So you can go look at them. If they're not symptomatic or anything, just skip it. Oof. That is what was told to me. And I looked at her and I went, yeah, no, no, we, we ain't doing that. Yeah. It was, it was absolutely crazy. 
I totally believe in shortcuts and yes. I totally believe in anything that can make you more efficient. But not that. So <laughs> safely. It gets to the point where you're like not giving meds on time or putting the patient like in danger, like their actual body in danger. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's not a shortcut mm-hmm. anymore. Lying in the sand. No. And the other yeah. nurse and I, I mean, we worked well together and she was like, but, what the, you know, we were both seasoned nurses. So, but I felt most of my skill was there. I could pop a Foley and do, and I do all that stuff. But, you know, for the new nurses, you don't even have that yet. You know, I, I have a certain amount of skills. Meg, you have a certain amount of skills. MZ, you have a certain amount of skills that you guys can walk in at a moment's notice. And if the world's coming to an end, we're like, who needs an IV? Who needs a Foley? Who needs, you know, yeah. maybe I may I, not be pretty, but it'll get done. I might not tube somebody, but cry, cry, maybe would consider. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. But anyway, just the whole point is just have faith. Like Meg said, you're, you're new. Give yourself yeah. grace. We all went home with nightmares. I woke up one time and all I could see was I was at the time I was a nursing student and I was monitoring all the, I was in a cardiac step down unit. I was monitoring all the heart rhythms, 16 mm-hmm. of them, right? I had to track all of it, every PVC, every, everything. And I remember waking up and I, I wasn't really awake. It was in my dream. And I saw 16 flat lines. Oh, yeah. It's going to happen. You're going to have those nightmares. You're going to process, you're processing oh. like stress. You know what's so funny? I still have, I still have nightmares. And See? the most common nightmare is it's the end of the shift and I'm kind of getting my stuff ready to give report. And I didn't realize I had an extra patient and I didn't see them the whole 12 hours. And I'm like, oh my God, I got to go check. Like, that's my most common night. <laughs> I didn't know I had a patient. And to this day, I still have those where I'm like, what? Missed this- one. See them. Oh my God. Yeah. No. Uh, nightmares. But that's kind of. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, sorry. I cut you off. Go ahead. I was going to say that's also kind of part of the trauma of any job, like literally any job, because I is. still have about some of my most stressful jobs of like working the starbucks drive through in the morning like i still have those stress dreams every every job is stressful and you're gonna have to like process that trauma but specifically something in healthcare, you really need to take your mental health seriously because it is traumatic you're seeing yes the worst so you do need to do something to take care of your mental health do you help focus on that with them when you're talking to new students do you talk about that mental health part of what's built into my nclex program there's a lot of mental health habits and anti-anxiety habits and breathing exercises that um, I teach you to do every day, as well as in that new nurse survival guide. You have to get a hold of that early because if you if you let it go, it's going to get worse and worse. Your anxiety, your pre-shift anxiety is yeah. going to get worse and worse. You got to do something before shift and after shift to process what happened. Even if you're like, oh, that wasn't that bad of a shift. There's something there that you is still worth processing getting off your chest, journaling, talking to a friend, talking to a professional that is so beneficial, especially in those first five years. I want to make it clear that nowhere in there did Meg say that means going to the local bar right after shift. No, healthy coping mechanism. Because I I definitely know unhealthy coping mechanisms. Me too. I was a flight nurse. Especially smoking a box of stogies. (laughs) <laughs> yes, which is so comforting. Right. And it does hit that dopamine part of your brain. But long term, it is not helping. Not it's good. Not helping my anxiety. It's not helping me process anything. No, so I, really... help me <laughs> I just don't... I think we all know uh levity is is good for uh that decompression, which we were talking about nightmares, and I was gonna say segues into a question I had for Meg. Uh I know you talk a lot about uh haunted hospital tales. So I wanted to ask <laughs> if you would share one with us. Oh my gosh, I have so many. Okay, so oh, this that's is kind a of good like one. Another little thing that I get so excited about. I don't know. Same. Why, but I get, and now something in my house is going to happen. But I do feel like ghosts like follow me or something. Like everywhere I've worked, I've had some 
paranormal experience. And I have so many stories. I have an entire series on my TikTok, the creepiest things that have ever happened. I saw that. I was actually looking at some of them. I was like, oh. I think I'm now on like part 70 something because there's, I have so many stories. Meg, let's do a Halloween. We had to do one for Halloween. Oh my gosh. Yes. Let's do that. We'll do it. We can collab with Meg. Yes. Yes. For sure. I'm coming back. Okay. We're going to do it. We're going to set it up. (laughs) So one of the craziest ones that I actually have a picture of And I was on um, some haunting podcast as well, Haunted AF podcast. I told this story. And that's not Air Force. (laughs) No. (laughs) No. Good to clarify on this podcast. Uh, But I told this story and I still have the picture of it. Uh, We were at capacity. I was working night shift and I had to go, this patient coded died in my room. And we had to like fix the bed, whatever, as I'm like, remove the body, as I'm trying to like get the bed all situated and make the bed, it's like not working. There's something not working. And I'm like, oh, all right, work order. I got to go get a new bed. All the other rooms are full. So I call a supply room and there's like one bed left in there because we're at hospital capacity, ER is at capacity. It's a mess. It's a disaster. It's a cluster F. So I go with a tech to the supply area, which is in like a different building and you have to cross this creepy ass hallway to get there. So we're going to go get the bed. It's in the middle of the night. We're coming back to the floor. We have to cross that creepy hallway that I don't like that separates the two buildings and the lights shut off as we're like almost to the end of the hallway and it's nighttime outside pitch black. So my tech starts screaming. I start screaming just because she's screaming. And I'm like, this is so scary. The lights had just flickered. The light turns back on and there's a huge footprint in the middle of the bed. (gasps) Seem not safe. We had brought sheets from our floor. We made the bed and then brought it. We made the bed. We saw the bed. We know that that wasn't there before. And it's a huge footprint, like a male footprint. You know how it has like the semicircle and then the heel part. Just one footprint right in the middle of the bed. And <gasps> I took a picture of it and I still have it. Oh my gosh. Oh, we so Ooh, that gives me the willies. I got right? goosebumps. Now we have to do a whole episode. That's what the call out's going to be. Give us your scary stories. And then we're, Meg is going to come back with me and MZ and we're going to do a whole Halloween one. Because that's her favorite holiday. MZ's favorite holiday is, ho- is Halloween. What oh Detox God. doesn't know is I've slowly been compiling creepy <laughs> military hospital stories we can uh, over the last like nine months yeah <laughs> just kind of hoarding them saving it for a rainy day and here we it is of, yeah we're here, gonna do now uh, we know we're gonna go one for one we're gonna do mz with her military hauntings uh in the hospitals against meg with her civilian uh, experiences and and then if people write in we'll maybe we'll include that in there too Holy cow. We'll do it over That's going to be an amazing episode. It is. It's going to be super fun. We have so much fun. It's like my favorite podcast. This is like you talk about just like you said, like you're in your, your thing, right? And, and yeah. you're doing what you're supposed to do. And when I got introduced to podcast, it was a couple of years ago and I laughed. I'm like, oh, I'm a nurse. Like I, I just kind of chuckled and kind of blew it off. And they're like, no, really? Anyways, they sweet talked me into it. And then I'm like, I like this. And so I, I've done another one, but this one is like my favorite, favorite. Like, it's fun. We put the fun in dysfunctional. We, we, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. We're very good at it. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited. All right. We could go on forever, but I promise that we're going to keep things to an hour because you are very busy. And so where can, we can find you on nursemegrn.com, right? That is yes, sure. that's my main platform. That's my little website where you can find all of my free resources. Um, yes. But I'm also on every social media platform. I am on Instagram. I'm on YouTube. I'm on TikTok. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Pinterest. If you can think of it, I'm there. So and if, it is the same username at Nurse Meg RN. And so what if like um, like student nurses are at colleges, like the student nurse associations there are just like... We need you. Can they just yeah. reach out and send an email? And Absolutely. Just email me at support at nursemegrn.com and uh, I will show up. And I always like to give out some goodies, some merch, some really helpful study guides, and just some encouragement to be like, yes, 
you picked the right profession. Nursing is amazing. Everybody should get into it. You have so many options with a nursing degree. So yeah, please invite me to your nursing school. I will show up. Mm, you know what? You know where we need to bring her, MC. We need to bring her on NurseCon. She she should Ooh. go. You that should come cool. with. You should meet us there. Nurse Actually, con. I almost signed up for it last year and I had like do a it. schedule conflict. We had to do something else. I think so we should I think we should connect you with Nurse Blake and you bring that educational piece to the student nurses on Nurse There's con. still room on the boat. I yeah. checked yesterday. They're still they're at ninety percent capacity. Come on, Meg. I should do a little session. Yeah. Well, I, I have that all planned out, but I bet for the following year, I think you, I honestly here, sorry, Blake, we're planning your cruise for you, but you know, we're like, <laughs> this is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do. <laughs> but I really think, cause you know, we do all, they have tons of educational stuff up there. He, Blake is just very philanthropic and he does a lot of stuff. But what I think would be awesome is that focus on the student nurses, you know, or the new nurses, you know, they're just babies, you know, less than five years and just, just saying. That. that would make me so happy. I'm planning and everybody's I- life here. <laughs> <laughs> we're manifesting, not manifesting. planning it, we're manifesting. That's it. We're manifesting, yeah. it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to wrap this down because if we don't, we'll keep talking. Then we'll be into ghost stories and that's going to be another whole podcast. And so, Forever. Meg's ready. She's over here. I'm, like, I'm coming yes. back for you, Meg. I'm coming back for you, girl. She yes. lo- you see exactly. her and she looks all bright eyed and sweet and innocent. And I'm like, she nurse. She got a dark side. <laughs> the creepy in me sees the creepy in you. And I love it, girl. I'm here it. for it. <laughs> All right. You got anything else there, Meg, that you want to impart? Any last words? Oh, I love all of you. Everybody who is a nurse, everybody who's a brand new nurse or thinking about being a nurse, I send you so much love. If you need any help in any part of your nursing journey, getting into school, passing school, getting your license, getting your bearings as a brand new nurse, contact me, DM me, follow me. I got something to help you. And she answers because she's on our podcast. I do. It's all me. <laughs> all right, MC, what do you got? NurseMegRN.com. Check it out. Newbies, get the study guide. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Check it out. Meg, thanks for coming and hanging out with us today. Thank you so much. This is so fun. It you guys was, are so great. It was fun. And so everybody, all these new nurses, not only are you helping yourself and decreasing your stress level, You're decreasing the stress level for everybody around you because it's a better working environment and all those other experienced people, including our LPN CNAs and med techs, (laughs) they will appreciate it too. (laughs) Fact. Fact. That's right. So, all right. That's all we got here today from Bullets to Bedpans. It's me, Detox, with my buddy MZ, and we are done for this week. Peace out, everyone. Peace, love, and Girl Scouts. 